And then I have one. Another one. This one is from the other poems. It's a little complicated to read. It's called uh, Roseate Spoonbills. And uh, those are tropical birds, quite ornamental. And uh, oddly enough, they speak German in this poem, but I'm not going to read the German speech. <laughs> this is just, but I'll give a, in the first three lines, I'll just give a hint. Then when I come to them, I'll read it in English translation, sort of insinuating what I'm doing. Oh, the German is, and the reason that the, uh, the, for the German is that it's all from Gustav Mahler's song cycle, Das Lied von der Erde, the Song of the Earth. And these are just little fragments chosen almost at random. They sort of fit to where the point is that they're used. There are not many of them. I'll give a flavor of it. Dunkel ist das Leben, ist der Tod. Mein Herz ist müde. Dark is life, is death. My heart is tired. Low over the placid water, their mouths slightly open, flapping with energy and focus, eyes staring at nothing, while clear the German words croaked intelligibly, advertising life's darkness, the f fatigue of the heart. To the right, the mass and dome of the salute, to the left of the Piazzetta, San Marco, and the Royal Daniele, a venerable hotel, almost as well known as its neighbors, the Doge's Palace and the Bridge of Sighs, well known to those suffused with Wagnerian, Malarian, death in Venice and nostalgia as were those in the gondola watching the roseate spoonbills utter the song of the earth. Others would not have noticed the roll of peeling bells swept the canal, the lagoon, the city. Notice the unattractive grunting punctuating the magnificent language of sorrow, of autumn, the season of perhaps the brightest blue in Venice's sky. Slowly the cortege rose over the Frari, the Grand Canal's loop beyond the Rialto, the train station and Mestre beyond, aggressive industrial landscapes, ribbons of rail track, a crescent of verdure ushering the great sheet of landscape dotted by towns, red tile roofs, ubiquitous the place, in the places, homo sapiens of homo sapiens, in its web of concerns, ships on the Adriatic, boats on the Po, the churning turmoil of the Adige at Verona, the shimmer of the snows of the Alps to the north, rick, 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 new sounds squirted from the spoonbill's beaks as Lombardia unfolded below the road webs of Milano ever tighter until the outlines of the Duomo and the Galleria sparkled in golden sunlight, then a sudden mass of roiling cloudiness, rick, 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 rick. the gondola more a magic cape, the passengers sometimes stretching slightly, craning necks, yawning, rolling shoulders against ennui, fatigue, and chill, the birds calling. The sun leaps behind the mountain range. With just the tips of Monte Rosa and Mont Blanc now shown in setting sun, it was sunrise when a break cut the roseate fleece of sunrise over gray mist reflected on the underwings of each spoonbill, the next still white, a feature unfamiliar to the passengers snapped into view, the London Eye, and nearby the Thames Embankment shepherding Parliament, and broken again, the clouds bunched over again and again. A cold wind bends from one grunting voice and from another. Lotus flowers will drift upon the water. But it was no lotus I saw in my head, the spinning wheel still, a pink, perhaps the color of the spoonbill's wings, but less lush, less baroque, harder, a slowly moving mobile, basic colors in little cut-out paddles, clockwise above me on the ceiling, 
the mobile faded now, so many years hanging over me, my teeth the subject of the dentist's interest, my tensely concentrating eyes upon the brittle, slowly moving wheel, blue eyes, the wheel receding, my arms and legs extended, suspended, my back sinking into the bowl of night, into the cup of a single eye, to my right hand, the glass of the Middle Ages, Chartres, West, Rosace, the deep reds and blues older than those of my eyes, but these were not blues that are personal, rather those of medieval glass, yellows too, swaths of these, and dark leading, drawing pictures, swords and knights. Then from my left hand, the churning spew and spray of the charging prow of the Queen Mary, the first one, named for Mary of Tech, Victoria, Mary, Augusta, Louise, Olga, Pauline, Claudine, Agnes, wife of George V of England, Scotland and Wales, etc. Mid-Atlantic, myself and a French student on her first voyage beyond her home from Grenoble to Southern California, we were both full of joy. There were dolphins or porpoises or whatever they were, leaping and perhaps as young as we were. The sea parting before the great black hull, soon to rust in parody in Long Beach Harbor, its glory as forgotten as Mary of Tech, stern in her hauteur, broken as such things are. Point Lobos at Monterey, a wild surf, funnels of Pacific blue exploding upward over rock, the cypress trees gnarled, wind-shaped, dripping in the spray of airy foam. Transfixed, I stared into the maelstrom and was dragged away, a passerby noticing I could not turn away. This setting was at my right foot, and from my left, a tall wood-framed window the bricks surround a foot thick, the view to the west over the Mississippi River floodplain toward Iowa Bluffs, a steam locomotive chugging a long freight train near the distant ridges, puffs of steam gesturing skyward through the bitter wind, winter cold. School, so far away from home, so lonely, so certain that the formality of this distant landscape would be a life I preferred to haunting feelings. Boys in their sperm-stained underwear, frayed white shirts and old neckties, the worthy father Pites, S.J., explaining the Latin gerundive. The train moved implacably across the horizon, the river unseen and frozen anyway, just spotty snow and leafless trees, what passes for an adolescence. Swaying, the eye sometimes cuts the river's surface, more often hovers just above the waterline, barges chugging past in long lines, flotsam, sometimes above, sometimes below, and soggy fish and garbage, the detritus of the human and the larger world, churning within the matrix of the water, the eye alert to the bright stares of the spoonbill's dark sockets, their oar-like bills disturbing pebbles, breaking stalks of rigid vegetation, the brine shrimp somewhere pursued endlessly. By degrees, their scarlet transforming creamy feathers into roseate extravagance, slicing the sands back and forth, pink churned into darkness. Everywhere and always, blue light in the distance, eternal, eternally. Those last three lines are from um, the song cycle in her German, but Ewig, Ewig, if you know the song cycle, it's quite beautiful. <laughs> 